there is a strong delusion that begins to happen when we stray from the clear teachings of, of the Bible. Hey, everybody, welcome, welcome. welcome to the Kingdom Conversations. Oh, uh, yeah. We have conversation connected to immigration. We have conversation connected to globalism. We have conversation connected to communism, if you will. God wants us to understand what's going on so that we are prepared. So that we are are prepared. We're reading from our foundational scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, starting the 13th verse. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you for reading that. Listen, we, we're going to get right to this. I, I don't want to belabor it. We're going to start talking about the deep state. Okay. And I'm going to give you a few points about that. But where we're going with this in our next teachings is we're going to go right to the mark of the beast, okay? Because that's what's upon us. And we need to understand what that looks like because all the pieces are already right there. So we're going to go from the deep state and then we're going to talk about the mark of the beast in our in the upcoming week, probably start next week. But tonight we're going to start talking about the deep state. Let's go right to the slideshow that the and, and we'll, we're going to open this up and Starting in the book of Jude, Jude precedes the book of Revelations, obviously, Jude and then the book of Revelations. Jude opens up and he's thinking about what he wants to write to us. And when you see here on the screen, he says, dear friends, he says, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once we're all entrusted to God's holy people. And I want to stop there just for a moment because this is him writing to fellow believers. And as he was thinking about this, he says, I wanted to write to you about the salvation that we share. But he said, I feel compelled to write and to urge you more importantly than just than just talking to you about the salvation that we share. It was more important. I was compelled to write and to urge you guys to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. So if he approaches this thing, it's like, listen, I, I want to just kind of like unpack the salvation part and talk to you about that. But what became more important to me is to tell you guys you needed to fight, that you guys needed to contend for the faith. And then he explains why in the next passage. And then the next passage, he says this, for certain individuals, whose condemnation was written about long ago. Here's the key for, you know, the deep state. It, it, it occurred very, very long time ago. He says, for certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. Okay, they, they did it by secret. This is the key word. The, the deep state, as, as I'm going to unpack for us a little bit, these are individuals, these are groups, these are interlocking groups and individuals and families that have secretly slipped in in the same way that Jew talks about individuals, certain individuals who were worthy to be condemned. They were their condemnation was written about in the scriptures even before he was writing. He says they are ungodly people and they pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality. And they deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Now, the key to hone in on is that The people that he's referring to, he's saying that they do something with God's grace. They take God's grace and they say there is a license for immorality and that they deny Jesus Christ, our Lord. But the license for immorality is where we're talking about sexual immorality. Now, I'm not going to read more of Jude, but what he's talking about is that there are certain individuals 
who have come in among the body of Christ. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to pervert God's grace and say, you know what? You don't, God's grace is not there for us to be able to, uh, uh, to, to get better, but it's almost as they're saying God's grace is there for us to continue in sin. And we know that, that that's a lie. It's like the Bible says, what then? Shall we continue in sin? Certainly not. We shall not continue in sin, but there are some that say, you know what? It's okay if you live particular lifestyles. And that's, that's another teaching. We're not going to go too deep. Let's go to this next slide. Okay. So now I want to show you uh, an image from the book of Esther, okay? Um, because as the body of Christ, and this is this is something that the Lord was was showing me as I was studying this. So you know the story of Esther and Haman, who uh, Mordecai would not bow to. And if you don't know it, uh, take some time to read the book of Esther because that's where you will find the story of. Huh, very interesting. Somebody sent me a text. I'm just thinking about it. Uh, just just recently, this past week or last week, someone sent me um, a reference in the book of Esther. Just coming to me now, so forgive me for this extra conversation. But here's here's what happened. Haman was appointed by the king to a very special position, and there was a Jew in the kingdom named Mordecai who would not bow down and honor Haman, and as a result. They caused uh, it caused Haman to be upset, you know, that Mordecai would not bow down and worship him. And so fast forward to this one passage in Esther three and eight. And it says that then Haman said to King Xerxes, there is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom who keep themselves separate. Their customs are different from those of all other people and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. So this, this spirit, beloved, is the same spirit. The spirit that existed back then is the same spirit that exists in the world today. There's a spirit that is anti-Christian. They do not want us to be in the world uh, exerting the influence that we exert in the world. They know that we don't have their same customs and we don't do the same things that other people do and that we don't obey the king's laws. Well, we do, but when it comes to the ungodly parts of obeying the king, we don't obey those parts. And so King Haman was like, uh, Haman was like we, we need to get rid of, of them for this reason. And uh, the parallel is like, that is, that's where we are in the world today. We are, we are the people that Mordecai represent, that Esther represents. There's, there are people right now that are dedicated to the eradication of Christians, okay? This next slide. So now um, there's all of this legal maneuvering. There's all of this uh, kingdom uh, edicts that were going forth. And so Mordecai hears of this. When you look in the next, this is at, at Esther 4 and 1. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, Bible says he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and ashes and went out into the city wailing loudly and bitterly. So stop right there, because one of the things that the Lord was telling me to do, and, that, and, and I think that we're already doing it on this call, there's already fasting and there's already praying going forth on Wednesday for yes. our children. Yes. But what the Lord was saying is that with these secret societies and with this deep state, with individuals that are at work, to destroy the body of Christ, to destroy Christianity, God is saying that this is what we have to do. Not tear our clothes and not put on sackcloth and ashes, but we need to be loud about what's going on. Understand what's happening. We're not supposed to just fast and pray, but God says, don't be silent. Come this on. Has happened. This word came up before. We cannot afford to be silent as deep state actors and agents are trying to take over the world and we are still here. While we're here, God is telling us that we need to be making noise about the things that are going on in the world. Part of the reason why people would even be on this call tonight is because God wanted the message to be disseminated into your ears to understand that there are some things that you need to not be quiet about. That's right. That's right. So now this next passage, this is just, just to prepare your mind. So Mordecai sent to Esther and said, look, I, I need you to go to the king and, and to do something for us. 
And this is the answer that came back. He said, he sent this answer to Esther. He says, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as uh -huh. this. Man, so it's a whole lot in there. He says, if you remain silent, this is this is where God wanted us to be built up. Yeah. Even if you on this call, even if I remain silent based on the things that we are going to understand and receive tonight, God says that's still not going to stop my purpose of delivering my people from another place. You can be quiet. You can be silent. You cannot say something about the things that are going on in and around the world in and around Christianity to try to, to silence the voice of Christians, to try to make Christians back up and not go forward in the things of God. But God is saying to us tonight, like, listen, even if you do remain silent, I have deliverance that will come from another place. Hallelujah. Yes, another let's, let, let, Hallelujah. Let, let's back this up because God is saying this. Don't think that just because you are in the king's house, even, even that, because sometimes we think that that me me going to church or me me praying, me having the, the position that I have with Jesus, that that's enough. God is saying, even if you are with me, sitting by me, next to me, don't think that just because I, you're already saved. Don't think that just because you already have your ticket to heaven, that that exempts you from having to do some further work. Yeah, you got your ticket. Yeah, you're going to heaven. Yeah, you're OK. But there is still some greater work that I want you to do. And so the message here is like, listen, don't be silent. Don't be silent because even if you are, what is God saying? Listen, deliverance is going to come from another place. That's right. So now that's the background, the filter that the Lord was saying, okay, put this in the heart, put this in the mind, let them know that, yeah, there's, there's a deep state that we're about to talk about. But what God is having us to understand is that there's some things that we're going to learn tonight that he didn't want us to be silent about. Now on to what this deep state is. This next slide is the deep state. The definition is, is a clandestine, and clandestine is a word that means kept secret or done secretively, all right? It is a, a secret network of members of the federal government, as well as governments around the world. These network of members, they work in conjunction with high level, this is important, high level financial and so when I say financial, I'm talking about your banking institutions, all right? I'm talking about those that control the money and industrial entities. And so by industrial entities, I'm talking about the people that control control energy and commodities and things like that, you know, um, agriculture, these industries. So we have individuals that work together at high levels, finance, high level financial and industrial entities. These leaders, they exercise power alongside or even within the United States government and governments around the world. OK, so that is a, a, a working definition of what the deep state is. They are not elected officials. These are individuals who would be considered uh, in some respects lobbyists, people who come alongside and they have the ear of, of, of influence of, of, um, of politicians. They can speak into the ear of politicians. They can speak into the ear of decision makers you would never know who they were but they have the power to control uh legislation and things that happen in governments around the world so that's in in a in a very simple sense that's what the deep state is and when we read in jude i want you to understand that the idea of people coming alongside to try to influence people of power is not a new idea this has been happening from since the beginning of time OK, and so the, the deep state is anchored into actually the very beginnings. So where I'm going next is, and before I get to this next slide, I'm going to set up for you. Briefly, I'm going to talk to you about something called the Illuminati. We're not going to talk about the Illuminati, you know, a, a, a whole lot. But what I want you to understand about this spirit of the deep state. OK, there was a man named Adam Weishaupt. Adam Weishaupt was the founder and the creator of the Illuminati. So the Illuminati is a very real thing. It was founded by a man named Adam Weishaupt, and he had very specific ideas 
about how to influence the world. He was a Mason, a Freemason. Freemasons is in itself a secret society group. Okay. And I'm not going to go too deep into that, but when you talk about Freemasonry and Masons, that is a group of people who practice things in secret and they mm -hmm. actually try to wield power over government. So going to this next slide, there was a historian who himself was also a Mason. Okay. And he wrote a book called Proofs of a Conspiracy. He wrote this book back in 1798 and he reproduced major segments of the Illuminati's original writings. It's going to make sense in a minute. He stated that the express aim of the order, and we're talking about the Freemason order of Illuminati, he said the express aim of the order was to abolish Christianity. That was the aim of the Illuminati. And so where people talk about the Illuminati being this, that, and the other, one of the main focuses of the Illuminati was specifically to destroy Christianity. Some people don't, don't know that, but in their writings, that's what they were there to do, to abolish Christianity and to overturn all civil government. And this next slide is a quote on what Weishaupt said. He quoted Weishaupt as saying this. He said, the plan for the new world order, it can only succeed in no other way than for secret societies or secret associations. He said, these secret associations will by degrees, this means incrementally, and in silence, these secret societies would possess themselves of the government, of the states, and make use of those means for this, for this purpose. In other words, their whole method was to get close to political officials and then slowly and methodically and silently control the government. And so the deep state is influenced by uh, people who have um, ancient ideas, Illuminati ideas, Freemason ideas, okay? And these are the people that um, that are a part of the deep state. Now, when I, when I say this, that doesn't mean that everybody who, who works alongside the government in a deep state capacity understands these things. A lot of people are doing these things and they are, are almost like useful idiots. They don't know that they are being used to further mm -hmm. the right. agenda of the enemy. And so I don't want you to think that, oh, man, everybody that's doing this understands that they're doing work for the enemy at the end of the day because they don't understand that that's what they're doing. But that's exactly what they're doing. And what has happened is that it has all come together in one body of people. That one body of people right now is being influenced by what we call the United Nations, the United Nations. In this next slide, you'll see I got this graphic and in this graphic. I got this hand that's controlling people like a puppet master. And then the other graphic is the symbol of the United Nations, because within the United Nations, there are people that are being controlled by dark forces, by angelic beings, and, and they don't know that that's what they're doing. They don't know that they're being controlled by, by the enemy. There are some things that they're doing that can be considered good, but at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is they're trying to eliminate Christianity. Let me show you this next slide. I just mentioned the United Nations, okay? The, the United Nations, the land that the United Nations itself is built upon was purchased with money from John D. Rockefeller or the Rockefeller family. And in this slide, you see that John D. Rockefeller, Rockefeller is given an $8.5 million check to the first secretary general of the United Nations. This happened back in 1947. And the money is to buy the land on Man Island which will house the United Nations building. Now, the Rockefellers, you know, and I'm not going to unpack all this tonight, but the Rockefellers, along with some other names like Rothschilds, Warburgs, those entities that own the banks, like you and I bank with Chase Morgan and Wells Fargo and other entities. Well, what you might not know is that John D. Rockefeller, you know, Warburg, Rothschild, you know, and a, a several other families are those who have controlled the financial institutions. Now, remember earlier I talked about the deep state being uh, a network of financial institutions and industrial leaders working together. Well, it goes back to John D. Rockefeller and these other entities taking and building. They built up the United Nations and their goal was to use the, not the United Nations to ultimately the core for a new one world order. They were going to use the United Nations to be their voice, to be their instrument, to be their vehicle 
to drive all countries to come together into a new one world order. Now, I know a lot of this, you know, is very technical, but but you got to get it because God don't want us to be dumb. God doesn't want us to not understand right. that we have yeah. receipts and information for facts. Yeah. This is not conspiracy. Like this, this is not a conspiracy. This is a fact. This is, these are receipts and the receipts are here. I want to draw your attention to this next slide. It's no longer here, but just to let you know the demonic influence that had happened and then they had to back off. This image is the image of something that they were calling a guardian for in that international peace. Now look at it. It looks like a, a, a leopard or a lion and it has like eagle's wings. Now, you know, we, we've looked at this before. But this statue was placed in front of the United Nations building. It got so much backlash for being reminiscent of an end times beast statue that they removed it because people were going, hey, wait a minute. That looks like an image from the book of Daniel. It's like you guys are just going to get in our face and put a statue that is a representation of end time of an end time beast right in front of the building. So they did that. They literally did that. This was Testing. back in, in December of 2021 where they did this, but they got so much pushback that they said, uh-oh, we better move it out of the way. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, that's what pushback does. When these other entities are trying to put these kinds of things in our face, we don't have to take it. If we're not quiet, if we make noise, if we're loud, that's if right. we wail about the things that are going on, God is letting us know that pushback does something. Pushback keeps the enemy from running roughshod, but we can't be afraid and we can't be timid. We have to open our mouths and we have to say no. I, I wanted to share that because the Holy Spirit said, go on and show them that image for the United Nations that basically outlines and shows us like, okay, it is low key. It was a low key like little, um, you know, the devil do little things. The devil will try okay. to do little, little, little things like that, little yeah. subtle things to see if you'll let him get away with it. That's right. Come you know, on. And, and here's the thing. It's like, no, it's like, I see you. Oh, okay, that's what you're trying to do? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I'm going to explain in a minute how Rockefeller, as just one of the, the families that's behind this push for a new world order, how his money has gone to do work that has got us to where we are right now. Really quickly, this guy, um, his name was Georgi Lukacs. And he says that back in 1918, if you guys can take some screenshots of this if you want, but back in 1918, he became the minister of culture. Okay, so think, think social sciences. This He is one of the, the people who was engineering the social sciences, right? So some of his ideas continued on to today, which is why I'm, I'm telling you about this guy right now. Um, he realized that if the family unit and sexual morals were eroded, that society could be broken down. He implemented a policy that he titled cultural terrorism. You know, it focused on two objectives, on mm -hmm. those two objectives, like destroying the family unit and destroying sexual morals. So he said that th we could do this. A major part of the policy was to do this, target children's minds through lectures that encourage them to deride and reject Christian ethics. You wow. see that, how that came up again? How, you know, the the, the Illuminati and, and this spirit is all about destroying Christianity and Christian ethics. And so what he did is he, he taught them and showed them graphic sexual matter. Stop right there. We're watching transsexuals, right? We're, we're watching parades. We're watching all of these graphic sexual images that are being presented to the children. OK, and this conduct, what it what it is doing, it is. Um, is showing how to um, to erode Christianity at the end of the day. So um, that's why I included that. Let's slide over to this next slide really quick. This is a book that is called Foundations. And in this book, this author, Renee Wormser, and you know, I, I know I might be sounding like I'm all over the place, but, but stay with me. This book outlines the work that was happening with respect to not only the Rockefeller Foundation, but something called the Carnegie and the Ford Foundations. If you understand anything about the grants that are being given to colleges and universities and movements like Black Lives Matter, for example, LGBT causes, you name it, 
the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation. These are entities that fund the campaign. So when you see these groups of people that don't have jobs, but they are blocking the freeway traffic, they are marching down the streets and they're doing all of this demonstration. Well, a lot of these people are getting their financing from grants and money provided by who? By the Rockefeller Foundations, by the Carnegie Foundations, by the Ford Foundations. These are the deep state actors that are using people to further their ends. I want you to, to hear just a little uh, background. Um, this next slide, this book was written by this guy named Rene Wormser, and he was the, the counsel, the attorney for the, the Reese Committee. And the, what they did is they, they investigated these foundations way back in 1952. And he gained a, a unique insight into the inner workings of the Rockefeller, Carnegie and Ford uh, created giants. His work analyzed America's most powerful tax exempt foundations, their actions as opposed to their stated purposes and the interlocking groups of men who run them and their influence on the country at large. Stop right there. This is what we don't understand. This is why, you know, we we're spending a lot of our efforts not understanding what's going on, because these these entities have the power in universities, in corporations all over the world, but especially in America to influence everything that happens in politics, in media, in, in movies and in everything. They hold sway and you don't understand it because they play in the background, but it is their money that shapes the campaigns of the things that people end up doing with art and with music and with all of these things, they fund the, the art that shapes the culture, okay? So Rockefeller, Carnegie, Ford, and other entities, they fund, if you will, they supply the money that shapes the narrative. They actually shape it and they, they provide money for people to walk that way. This next little slide, uh, the power of the individual foundation giant is enormous says when there is like-mindedness among a group of these giants, which apparently is due to the existence of a closely knit group of professional administrators in the social science. So social science field is, is just that. It is about human interaction. It's about how humans relate. And what we know they're doing right now is that they are trying to tell us that men, if they wanna be women, can be women. And that if women, that they wanna be men, that they can be men, what I'm telling you tonight is that these foundations, these entities are the ones that are hiring and not only hiring, but they are uh, uh, producing the thoughts. They are they are they are, are providing grants for professors who teach anti-Christian doctrine. Catch that. They yeah. are hiring and providing grants. They are paying the, the at, at the end of the day, they are paying the salaries for professors who will teach groups of young people that there are 15,000 different genders, that, you know, that there is, um, that the male female paradigm is not the only paradigm that you should follow. So they have been shaping the social sciences for the past almost 100 years, if not longer than that. Let's go to the next slide. This is a, a piece of literature called the after party. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because the Rockefeller philanthropy advisors are funding this work. <laughs> Rockefeller is behind this book. Now, this book is a, a project that is supposed to be produced by Christians, right? There are some Christian believers who have produced this book called The After Party. And it, as you see, this paradigm shifting book, um, it's supposed to it, it has a, a, a video series interactive curriculum, and it's supposed to provide churches and small groups and individuals with biblically-based approach to a complex topic. But it's funded by the Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors, which also funds pro-LGBTQ and pro-abortion initiatives. So follow the money. That's right. Follow, follow the money. So now, okay, about to, about to wrap this thing up. Um, before I get to this next slide, um, what the deep state is about to do now is with, with, with the idea of, of shaping the social sciences, one of the largest things that it has been doing, it, it, it has been shaping 
our uh, our minds and our opinions with respect to the climate. OK, so in order for the one world government to come into full play, they have to have control over every continent. And what they are about to do and what they are doing is they have created something called the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. What this is, is they are trying to tell the world that we have to reduce our carbon footprint. What that means is we're going to have to stop planting food the way that we used to. It means that we're going to have to stop a lot having as much livestock as we used to have. And in Europe right now, there is a great uprising from the farmers because mm -hmm. of this new law that they are trying to impose upon them. They have been setting fires and, and tractors have been blocking roads. We have not been hearing about it here in the States because they're trying to keep it quiet. Yeah. But what, what is happening is that because of this new movement to try to get everything to what they call a net zero emissions, they are pushing back. So when we, we did this uh, a little while ago, you got to get this because with respect to the mark of the beast, you need to understand that we've been talking about it and you're going to see it happen in your time. It's, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to see it. So this next slide, this man, Augustine, Carstens. He's the general manager for the Bank of International Settlements. And this is um, a one world government entity, if you will, just to simplify it. And what he said is that we intend to establish the equivalents with cash. And there's a huge difference there. For example, in cash, we don't know who's using a $100 bill today and we don't know who's using a $1,000 peso bill today. He says a key difference with the CBDC, which is a central bank digital currency, is that the central bank will have absolute control under rules and regulations that will determine the use of that expression. And what he's meaning is like, okay, that the, the central bank is going to have, again, absolute control and be able to tell you how you're able to use that digital currency, okay? He says, and they will also have the technology to enforce it. So in other words, they will be able to stop you from spending that digital currency if they want to. He says those two issues are extremely important and it makes a huge difference with respect to what cash is. Let's go to this next slide. This is a, an article about a Swedish fintech company called Deconomy. It's gonna make sense in a minute. He says everything that we put in our shopping basket comes at an environmental cost. <clears throat> so keep in mind we, this net zero thing that the one world government is trying to push everybody to a zero emission place. They're basically telling us that what we do, what we eat, where we go and everything is destroying the planet and that they have to save it. And so in order for them to save it, they have to push the rest of the world to adopt a new way of seeing the world, not, not just seeing the world, but also to tie in our money with their program. And that if our if, if we don't line up with their program, then we won't be able to spend that money. All right. So he says everything that we put into our shopping baskets comes at an environmental cost. See the word, that language, everything mm -hmm. you buy, it, it costs the world. It costs the environment. And he says, and while many of us are aware that we need to reduce our carbon footprint, that's that word carbon. He says advice on doing so can seem nebulous. And that means, you know, cloudy and and keeping tabs is difficult. But this new Swedish fintech company, Darkonomy, it's launched a new credit card that monitors the carbon footprint of its customers and it cuts off their spending when they hit their carbon max. Let's go to this next slide. Now, what you guys don't realize, this might sound like, oh, man, this is this is kind of boring. What I'm telling you, beloved, is that what you're hearing right now is what you are going to be seeing in the future. You're going to see your life and I'm going to see my life impacted by this idea That's that the neat. world is going to be destroyed if we don't abide by what they're telling us that listen the world is going to the, the seas are going to fill up and and the ice caps are melting and there're going to be more fires and the world as we know it is going to be destroyed if we don't do this and they have been uh they have been curating the narrative right in colleges and schools and you know you can't watch a Disney movie or any other movie without them talking about this kind of thing and shaping everyone's mind into believing that exactly what they're saying is the truth.
Let me finish reading this. The DO car tracks the CO2 emissions, carbon emissions, and, and they're linked to purchases. And what this do, it, it calculates the carbon impact of every transaction. And so everything that, that you buy, that I buy, they've already created the technology that shows, okay, this is, this is what this is doing to the environment. It says the aim is to encourage people to actively reduce their carbon footprint and demonstrate the impact that small changes can have on the environment. And what I'm saying is that this is right now, it's not something that's forced, but it's about to be forced in the very near future. The concept of offsetting carbon at the point of transaction is one that is slowly being picked up by companies. A number of airlines, including Qantas and Lufthansa, offer passengers the chance to pay extra to cover their carbon emissions with limited uptake. Last year, ice cream manufacturer Ben & Jerry's rolled out a system in some shops to allow customers to offset the carbon cost of their cone. Customers could see the amount of carbon generated from their purchases and make voluntary contributions toward carbon cutting projects elsewhere. Let's go to this, this last slide here. In April of 2021, this thing that I was talking about, the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero is chaired by Mark Carney. He's a UN special envoy on climate action and finance. He's bringing together, and this, this alliance is bringing together over 160 firms. Watch this amount of money. Together, they're responsible for assets in excess of $70 trillion from the leading net zero initiatives across the financial systems to accelerate the transition to net zero emissions by 2050 at the latest. But listen here, this alliance, the banks, corporations in these industries, you've heard this before, but God wants you to really get this. This is where we are. This is what's going to happen. You're banking with somebody that today they're not pushing the issue. But as we go forward, the issue is going to become increasingly pushed and you are not going to be free to be able to spend your money any way that you want to. What they're saying is like these these banking industries, they've already debanked people. When, when I say debanked, they have already decided that some people are not worth banking with and they have cut them off. They've closed their accounts. Yes. Because they did not agree with their policies or with their belief systems. And so they cut them off. And what I'm saying to, saying to you with this, this deep state is that there are deep state actors that are in bed with the financial institutions and industries. And they are telling us that you are no longer going to be able to spend money the way that you want to without us surveilling you. The currency is going to be under surveillance. And whatever you spend, they're going to be able to see it and they're going to be able to tell you, no, you cannot spend that money. Or if you do spend that money, there's going to be a carbon tax that you're going to have to pay to offset this. This is where we are, beloved. We were at this front of the mark of the beast. This is going to tie into, and I'm going to show you guys next week how this ties in very specifically. And maybe some of you might already be able to see how this already ties into the mark of the beast. I'm going to be very specific about it next week. This puts us at the enemy working behind the scenes through individuals, through banks, through corporations to get his agenda to make this one world government come to fruition. Amen. Okay, so now I know that there was a lot of stuff. I hope that there's several questions in that because that's what I'm looking for in this. I think that there should be some questions about what we just covered. So please, please, let's 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 talk about it. Now, here's the thing. When you said deep state, the aspect of understanding how that plays in real time for us, because we have been uh, trained up in traditional church that the last days of Mark of the Beast are going to come after the fact, or we're not going to be here. But now because we're here and we're getting information bit by bit, that we can understand the process of what the enemy is doing. And here's what I mean. If you need to understand how
you will see how in the point where you pay for your products, you can either pay with your bank card or right next to it, there's something where you can use to wave your hand. As, it, as Hope would say, paying attention is very important in these last days of where we are in the footprint of the Bible. The footprint of the Bible is giving us the opportunity to see what's going on in the news, what's going on in our communities, what's going on in our jobs or in our professions, behind closed doors, what's actually going on. And the enemy uses these little concepts, as I, I like to say, the Spirit told me, slow burn. Mm. The slow burn tactic that the enemy is using through various organizations that even we might not know who they are or what they are, but they're very close and connected to what we do in daily activities. So slow burn is a gradual organic development of feelings. Mm -hmm. So the slow burn thing is the Illuminati, as you spoke about Illuminati, a lot of people don't even deal with Illuminati because they think it's a far out thing, but it's a very common language in some circles. So within this circle of kingdom conversations, we're getting used to certain languages, certain connections to certain companies and business names and processes that we have to continue to open up the conversation to understand what these terminologies mean. So the slow burn here is that we're getting a gradual organic development of our feelings being turned over to being very simple minded and to accept what the mark of a beast wants to give us as supposed to be everyday processes. Hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're being slow burned into thinking it's okay. Condition. Slow burn into think condition, right? Slow burn into thinking condition into thinking paying things is okay this way, eating things okay this way, voting is okay this way, and accepting certain people. Now, as you were talking, the Holy Spirit said, go to what is now a representation of the LGBTQ community in our government. Rachel Levine, that's a name you can look up, is actually a transgender individual who is the assistant health secretary yeah. in our federal government. Right. And that is an example of how it is that if we don't understand how to vote correctly, how this thing gets to uh, confuse us and think, well, it's, it's just okay because they're okay people. They're not going to hurt anybody. They're okay. But in the back of our minds as believers and kingdom conversationalists, we know that's the trick of the enemy is to dummy down the acceptance of what we need to understand in our lives, in our communities, and even in our churches. Exactly. Because there's some pastors who are accepting these individuals into their congregations and teaching the word of God. Can I, can I let, let me comment yes. right there. Yes. One of the reasons why, you know, I, I included this uh, after party slide in there is that the subtlety of this, if this is not the first piece of propaganda that the, you know, deep state actors, I'll use that term, deep state actors have employed. They have, you go all the way back to um, a cause like, uh, pro-abortion. Well, Margaret Sanger was an individual who did not like Black people. And they took her doctrine and they promoted her doctrine, guess what, within the Black church. They literally said, and I was going to include those slides here, but I, I said, I, I don't want to do that. What they did was that same propaganda of, of coming in secretly, right, and saying, I'm actually going, we're going to use church ministers. We're going to use Black men and we're we're going to educate them with so 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 here's what happens today. We have a lot of our young people that go to school, and it's great to go to school. But what's happening when they go to school is that they're being indoctrinated by deep state actors by a social science that was curated by the enemy. So there's there's good stuff that they learn, but then there's a whole lot of anti-Christian content that they learn that they go back into the churches and back into their communities, and they, they begin to be therapists and counselors and educators and teachers. And there's this whole network of people who, even though they are Christians, are teaching and carrying water for the enemy, right? Yes. And so, yes. you know, whether it is, you know, um, this, this after party book or, or, or any other piece of propaganda 
what I'm saying by the deep state is that the deep state has been proactive in um, in churches all around. And so anytime it wants to get something done, it realizes that we've got to we have to covertly get information into the churches because the churches are going to disseminate that for us. Right. Yeah. And so now there's something called if you Google it, it's called pride in the pews. OK, pride in the pews is another one of these campaigns and entities where you got black people, you know, good looking black people that are now saying we, we want to come into your church. Right. We want to give you classes. We want to teach you how to become an inclusive and welcoming community for people of the LGBTQI lifestyle. OK. And guess what? They're getting funding and money from foundations. And sometimes it takes a minute for you to trace that the foundation has gone back to either a Carnegie or a Rockefeller or any or one of those other interlinking in, uh, interlocking agencies or groups. But it's like you when you trace it, you see that they're all interrelated. You see that it is all a deep network of roots that go all the way back to the enemy who yeah. is against God. It's not it's not that that the enemy is against us. The enemy has rejected God. God That's said right. it's like God said to to Samuel. It's like, you know what? Don't worry. It's not that that they have rejected you, but they have rejected me. That's right. I think the thing that gets us the most is that it's the details. <laughs> it's the details, because as soon as you start talking about the details, we get lost. We get lost. We're like, you know, what? Well, oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. Just, yeah. you know, just yep. give me the cliff notes. And, you know, that's pretty much what we did. But where we are. And, you know, with, the, with these financial pieces is that they have finally gotten to a place where they are able to control our money. Now, there's still time to push back. So the reason why this information is available for us right now is because while we are on the on the on the threshold, we are not completely there yet. And there is still the opportunity for us to resist this move that's telling us like, man. I, I can only spend my money through the United Nations um, idea of how I get to spend my money, that that we have to buy into this idea that we are destroying the environment. Now, here's 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 what what we can do. There are some scientists that will support this idea that we are we're destroying the climate. And then there are other scientists that will point back and says we're just going through cycles of things that have happened before. But for us in Kingdom Conversations, what God's placed upon me is like, OK, well, if if we're going to actually do this, both sides have to be presented. You put your best scientists that are pro come on, climate come change. On, come on, then let us present our, our scientists that show the other side of it. in the same way that you, pres you you present that, OK, it's better for people to be transgender. Well, there's another argument that says that there are people who regret becoming transgender, who regret transitioning, but their voices are not allowed to be heard. There's one voice that says, okay, vaccines are good. And there's another voice that says, well, vaccines are not so good. And here's the evidence. And so there are multiple voices where on one side, only one argument is being provided. And what God is telling us is like, you know what? Be loud about the other side. Be That's loud. Right. So That's that right. Just, you know, so it don't just have to go that way. And not just for ourselves, but for the generation that's coming up. For your children and for your grandchildren, for my children, for my grandchildren, we can't afford to be silent so that when they be like, you know, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, you know, um, why was it like this? Like y'all didn't do nothing? Like y'all didn't y'all didn't try to Come like on. stop it? Y'all y'all didn't at least try nothing. It's like y'all don't got no campaigns, no flyers, no letters, no books. Y'all didn't do nothing to try to stop the, the, the enemy from just like running roughshod. Not so. Mm. I, I saw in my head. When Elijah had the Gehazi's eyes open, it's like, listen, I, I want I want him to see the angels. I want him to see all of the angels that are on the mountains. That there are more that are for us than are against us. And we think sometimes that we are outnumbered. And it's just like, Lord, open his eyes. Lord, open her eyes so that I can see, so that we can see open that you eyes. have your angels that are with us and for us, ready to do battle, if we would just open our eyes and see. It's the same thing, like, like when the Lord was walking by those two disciples. Lord, show 
us, what's available to us, the power that we have. Last week, the whole idea of transhumanism, this idea that there's more available to us if we would access it. That's right. But but if but if we walk around consumed with, with the things that are going on in bed, like, man, that's too much for me to take on, then guess what? The enemy will he will applaud and he will just salivate at the fact that, man, just I'm I'm glad that they don't realize that God has given them the power to walk over serpents and scorpions and over all my power. I'm glad that they don't realize that. I'm glad that their eyes are closed to the fact that they can actually defeat me, but they don't believe it. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. And so part of our responsibility, even, you know, going back to some of the thoughts from last week, we have to ask questions. We have to grow. Guess what this guess what this is? This is an iron sharpening iron conversation. And guess, guess why you don't like it right now? Because it don't feel good. Because when something is rubbing up against you and it's not that common stuff that you like, if that it's like part. if it's not like a hallelujah, hallelujah, like I say hallelujah and I want you to say hallelujah. But sometimes it's hallelujah. Ooh, what? what ha, whoa, whoa. What? Hey, what? Oh, what's that? It's like, yeah, that's when because iron sharpening iron actually creates sparks. Yes. Hello. Hello. It, it creates friction. Yes. And so right now you might be feeling a little friction based on something that you've been hearing. And what God is saying is like, I'm sharpening you. I'm trying to get Come you on. to a yeah. place that is a little higher than where you've been. And so sometimes Hallelujah. coming a little bit higher means you're going to be uncomfortable. That's right. It, it's, it, it's, a, it's a new wine paradigm, if you will. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, you, you want to drink something that tastes like what you've been drinking. Something is wrong yeah. with you. It's just like, yeah, I'm only going to drink wine that tastes like the wine I drank before. Get out of here, man. Come on. How you get to determine what the new wine tastes like and why are you going to judge the new wine based on the taste buds of the old wine? Yes. Let 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 the wine that God pours in your glass taste how it tastes. And And, and when you drink it, you know, I know you might want to be like Jesus in one sense and say, Lord, let this cup pass from me because I don't like the way it tastes. Come on. But if I, got, if, 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 if I need to drink it because that's a that's what you have assigned for me, then I'll drink it. Bitter cup. And because we are the, the last of because we are the end time saints. Guess what? All of the knowledge and all of the information and all of the data that has been accumulated from the past up until now, guess what? It is now put in our laps. Not that we have to deal with it all, but we are that generation that has so much more content that we do not have the luxury to act like we don't know. That's right. There's some things that we know that we don't want to know. That's right. Because we don't want to be responsible for it. Facts. I think Solomon said the best. It's like, you know, he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Why? Because it means I got to be responsible for what I know. Come I on. wish I didn't know it now. I wish I didn't know, you know, for example, I wish I didn't know I'm supposed to eat right. I wish I didn't know that because then I wouldn't have to deal with that knowledge. I wish I didn't know I'm supposed to pray or read every day. I wish I didn't know those things, but now I know them and it is a burden to me when I don't exercise those things. Because now it's weighing on my spirit and on my heart, and on my mind as a as a steward that is not stewarding what he was given oh, to steward oh. well. You know how the word said that he's the enemy is strategic. When I was looking and listening at what you said since 1947, they gave eighty five eight point five trillion dollars to buy this this house where they want the United Nations to be. So this mm. thing has been really planned and what i see is that what what we as the people have been is we've been desensitized to thinking we've been desensitized to flowing the way that god has called us to flow and because of that i can even see where people say oh my gosh we have to do this because we need to save the planet based on the narrative that they have been putting in place but what my question is and i know <laughs> today in in our in our our 
morning conversations, he gave a word and the word that he told me was, see, I think it was undercover. Mm. And then the word clandestine also came up. Mm. The main word that he said me is to, to me is to walk tall, stand up, speak mm. up, speak yeah. up. 